What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sayushi and this is hopefully going to be the last Genshin Impact video of today. I'm sorry I swamped you guys with so many videos, but I mean I had to kind of rush these out. So this video is going to be focusing on a new five star character that we're going to be getting for absolutely free, which is Aloy, the first crossover character of Genshin Impact, the main character of the Horizon series. We got the new Horizon game coming, so I guess that's why they ended up doing the crossover. But I really, really hope that we start seeing more crossover characters a little bit more frequently. Uh, but basically, the way that we're going to obtain this character apparently is there's going to end up being an event that we'll do, and then she'll just show up in the mail once you end up completing the event. I don't know if we get constellations for her i don't even know if she has constellations because that would imply that we would be able to grind out said event uh in order to perpetually get more and more constellations for her so we'll just have to wait and see but here's the thing uh aloy is going to be exclusive to ps4 and ps5 in the next update so august 31st is going to end up being genshin impact uh version 2.1 uh, and that's where Aloy is going to be exclusive during that update to PS4 and PS5 players. If you have cross save, I don't know if you'll be able to use her or not on uh, PC and mobile devices. You might be able to, but it's too early to tell. And then uh, from that point on, the next uh, update should end up being, uh, unless I ended up messing up with this, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six there weeks. Uh, so it should be October 12th. Uh, I think that's when version 2.2 comes in. Uh, I'd have to double check. But either way, in October, there should be the next update. And in version 2.2, that's when everybody else can end up getting Aloy. Uh, through the free means, right? So we won't be able to get her up until that point. Now, uh, that does mean that PlayStation players are going to be a little bit out of luck because you'll be able to grind some of her resources to get ready for her, uh, but some of the resources are exclusive to version 2.1, uh, which means that you'll have to wait until the update hits before you can grind for her right then and there. But for us on PC and mobile devices and stuff, we basically have weeks and weeks and weeks of being able to grind all the resources up for Aloy, so that's pretty cool. Uh, she's going to end up taking the boss materials from the Cryo Hypostasis, which is going to end up being Cryo Cube right over here in Dragon Spine. Though not only the gems, but also just the boss drop itself. Uh, her plant is going to end up being Crystal Marrow, uh, which is going to end up being over here along the uh, Serpent's Head and the Serpent's Spine and so on and so forth. Uh, but then she's also going to end up taking a Book of Freedom, which is Monday, Thursday, and Sunday. Uh, the books are actually from Liyue. I don't know why I was going over to Inazuma. Uh, and then there's going to be the new resources, which is the new enemy drop, which this is, uh, as far as I know, uh, exclusive to enemies that are on... Watatsu, I, I don't know if it's on Watatsumi Island, uh, but it's Spectres. Uh, I'm pretty confident that these are the Spectres. I, I could be wrong about that though, so don't quote me on it. Um, and then there's going to end up being the new weekly boss material for Ascension, which is going to be a resource from Signora, who again is going to end up being an exclusive boss uh, or a boss that comes out in uh, version 2.1. So moving on, let's talk about Aloy's skills. So Aloy's skill or E ability, Aloy throws a freeze bomb in the targeted direction that explodes on impact, dealing cryo damage. After it explodes, the freeze bomb will split up into many chill water bomblets that explode on contact with opponents or after a short delay, dealing even more cryo damage. When a freeze bomb or a chill water bomblet hits an opponent, the opponent's attack is decreased and Aloy receives one coil stack. Aloy can gain up to one coil stack every 0.1 second. Uh, so then the skill goes on to say that the coil itself, each stack increases Aloy's normal attack damage. When Aloy has four coil stacks, all stacks of coil are cleared. She then enters the rushing ice state, which further increases the damage dealt by her normal attacks and converts her normal attack damage into cryo damage. So we, she actually has cryo infusion. While in the rushing ice state, Aloy cannot obtain new coil stacks and the coil effects will be cleared 30 seconds after Aloy leaves the field. So... That's pretty darn good for a free character. Not, not gonna lie, dude. Like it, it, it Aloy kind of seems like a four star character that they just bumped up to five star. Uh, and that passive or, or that skill alone is actually really, really good. 
uh, and just seems like she could end up being pretty cracked for, uh, you know, for a random free character anyways. Like, I like it, dude. And not to mention, uh, I love the style of the character. I think that it actually looks really unique to Genshin. Doesn't look like, you know, the traditional anime waifu characters. It actually looks like, I don't know, a character from a different video game. Crossover stuff. I want it. Uh, so moving on to her ultimate ability, Aloy throws a power cell filled with cryo in the targeted direction, then detonates it with an arrow de uh, dealing area of effect cryo damage. There's literally nothing else to the description, uh, at least on Honey Impact, so I don't know if there's more to it than that, but uh, th that's, that's a little bit lackluster. I mean, I guess whatever. It's been a while since we ended up having a character that was so simple, I'll say, uh, which honestly... I'll take it. I, I like simple characters because it makes my brain not hurt. Uh, so then let's move on to her passive abilities. So when Aloy is in the party, animals who produce fowl, raw meat, or chilled meat will not be startled when party members approach them. So you can hunt piggies right up in their face. I like that because it means that I could use Gene to literally knock enemies off a cliff uh, or knock animals off a cliff. There's something wrong with me, okay? Uh, and then there's combat override. So when Aloy receives the coil effect from Frozen Wilds, her attack is increased by 16%, while nearby party members' attack is increased by 8%, and this effect will last 10 seconds. That's a pretty considerable random buff from her E ability, dude, and those passive grenades and stuff. It just seems really cool. Maybe this is why she doesn't necessarily have constellations because she doesn't really need them because her abilities are already really weird and complementing each other. Uh, and then strong strike when Aloy is in the rushing ice state conferred by frozen Wherever wilds. Uh, so, you know, using the coils and so on and so forth. Her cryo damage bonus increases by 3.5% every one second. A maximum cryo damage bonus increase of 35% can be gained in this way. So that's, that means she's going to end up getting a 16% attack increase on top of, uh, you know, as you end up building up your uh, cryo damage, you can get an additional 35% of just cryo damage. That that tells me she's probably not getting a constellation. Maybe she is, uh, but we don't currently have that on uh, Honey Impact, and I, I wouldn't expect it just because of the weirdness of the character. So let's look at how we're going to end up building her. Probably just a Ganyu, honestly speaking. Uh, outside of the fact that the only thing that I'm missing with Ganyu is I'm rocking a four-piece cryo set rather than using uh, a Wanderer's Troop set just because that's going to end up making Ganyu's charge attacks better. Uh, my point being is that with Aloy, you probably are just rocking a four-piece cryo set just because it's going to end up being the most beneficial. Uh, for her bow, you can end up using energy recharge, uh, attack percentage. Uh, you could use the you know one that we ended up getting out of the event if you want Elemental Mastery, but generally speaking, you're probably going to stick to the usual ones, which is going to be attack percentage, so on and so forth. Uh, you could use the Battle Pass one for crit rate. You could end up using uh, the one out of the Paimon shot for crit damage. Uh, and then if you have any five-star bows, well, be my guest, because I sure as heck don't have any of them. But generally speaking, you're probably going to just be building Aloy towards DPS. Uh, and I would recommend using the four-piece, because, uh, you know, two-piece gives us more cryo damage. Four-piece makes it so that when a character attacks an opponent affected by cryo, their crit rate is increased by 20%. If the opponent is frozen, crit rate is increased by an additional 20%. So that's basically a free 40% crit rate so long as you tag an enemy with water, right? Which can end up being really good if you end up actually going for Kokomi, who's going to be one of the new characters. Uh, now, as far as the artifacts, uh, you know, stats you're going for, the hat is just going to be crit rate or crit damage, depending. Uh, and then, obviously, your goblet is going to end up being cryo damage bonus. Your sands can end up probably just being attack percentage. I don't know what else you would end up bothering going for unless you would use, like, an energy recharge. But generally, Aloy seems to be full DPS. Uh, and then, of course, you know, with your feather and your flowers you can't really change those but your primary stats that you're looking for is attack uh crit damage crit rate the usual stuff right uh and then in terms of her talents personally it seems like her e ability is where it's at so i would probably level that one up first and foremost when i get her uh, I don't know how high I'm going to end up leveling her just because honestly speaking, I don't think she's going to replace anybody, uh, anybody in my party. But the fact that we get her for free, it's like, why wouldn't I use her at least for a brief moment? Uh, but I would rather not waste the talent materials and stuff like that. 
which I, I don't know. I mean, this is entirely up to you which ones you want to end up leveling up, but it also really depends on how you put her in your party. Like, are you going to be using her as a main DPS? Because it seems like you might be able to, uh, depending on how crazy her damage scales or not. I don't know. Um, but either way, that's already going to end up doing it for today. So thanks so much for watching, gamers. Really appreciate it. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want, support the channel, and have yourselves a fantastic day.